they have to find like natural ways of healing the body, taking care of the body, but also natural ways of preventing any problems that can occur in life or in physical activities or in sports or martial arts. In this system, the medicine itself is just like a quite a small part, so like one part. Whereas if I feel uh, the, or the way I feel about the Western medicine system is that the medicine is the biggest part, like that's the main part of it. Even if it's good, if you do it too much, it turns bad. But in the West, everyone thinks like green tea is good, so let's drink like 10 cups per day to increase our like uh, growth hormone levels and reduce inflammation, but that's actually horrible for your body. You know, in many religions all over the world, actually, you bump into terms such as the heaven and earth. And to be honest, also in the Chinese society, there are these terms, and this is something that I also heard Grandmaster Jiang Yushan use. I remember we were in front of the temple in Taiwan, one of these uh, occasions. We visited actually four times in Taiwan, but on this one occasion he was doing the standing practices and demonstrating this to us. And afterwards he started to talk about this kind of theory behind these practices and what do they mean and how do they de develop the body and the mind. And he's, he mentioned that you know, these standing practices, they build, they're trying to build a unity between the heaven and earth. And you have the earth, and you have the human, and you have the heaven. And on those times, I didn't even have that much really pr uh, practice. I didn't have that much experience, actually, in the uh, practices themselves. And, and I didn't really have a proper idea of the energy through my own body. So I couldn't really even understand what this meant, this heaven and earth. It sounded nice. It was it sounds deep. It's it's very cool. You know, even in Christianity you have heaven and earth. But if you start to just think about it that way, you, you, you begin to like, okay, heaven, it's like some place somewhere and earth is earth. But when I later got into these actual standing practices and advanced energy work that we learned from him uh, and the breathing practices, I start to rethink this this term. It just had stayed in my mind, heaven and earth, unity, heaven and earth. Like, what, what is that? Like, it has to mean something. But it, it doesn't have to mean this, this like an actual physical area. This is what I realized. It is more like a metaphor. Metaphor between your personal, like, lower and higher states. Like, heaven is just a metaphor for a certain higher state that is within yourself. And you can think of it, it, it as if you have a catapult and you have the structure in the catapult and you want to launch that catapult, you want to launch a big rock, you want to launch a big rock somewhere, you know, to a wall of a castle or something. The base of the catapult has to be very strong. It has to have the core and everything so that it, ca it can actually store enough energy to launch that rock over there. And in the same way, in these practices, we're trying to, to build a certain energy so we can reach into, uh, into a higher state. Like if we, are, if we don't have the energy in our bodies, like we cannot reach a certain potential in our lives, whatever, whatever it may be. And this, this doesn't have to be like sports. You know, we often emphasize sport because that's what we're doing. But in, for example, you know, thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, when, pe when people were practicing these Qigong methods and trying to accumulate energy and, and, and cultivate their energy, they were not necessarily doing sports. They, were just, they, they just wanted to have the necessary energy for their lives, for the most optimal lives possible. And this meant, you know, business, taking care of your, of your family, of your closed ones, or having wanted to make some other big impacts on the society it could be anything or it could be the fighting or the or like wars you could be a, a general or something but th this is what really stand out to me like this unity like build a it's about building a you build a route but it's like an energetic route you build an internal energetic route you increase the capacity of your body and once you have increased that, then that energy can like can be launched into the world, and it can be launched into all kinds of uh, all kinds of activities, as I mentioned. And I think this is this is kind of something that is actually 
is really behind the Qigong practices. And what we will probably discuss about more is the different ways that uh, the uh, or the methods that they actually use to gather and accumulate this energy that then can be used in different areas. But the in, yeah, the just about the energy itself because it's such a vague concept. But everyone knows, you know, everyone understands that you can feel sometimes that you don't have energy. Even when you wake up, you've like, you have slept through the whole night and you still wake up, for example, tired. Like you know that you don't have energy. Sometimes you may, you may want, like we all want to have energy. It's just about how do you get it? Like people try to get the energy through overeating, taking maybe caffeine, taking some drugs, drugs taking stimulants. But in Qigong, the, the main idea is you can get this energy, you can get clean energy. Like you don't want to get the oil or the coal or something nuclear, like goo. You want to get clean energy straight from the source, and this is what what it, what they what they actually developed a ways to build up clean energy in the body, straight from the source through natural means, uh, through these different methods that they have. Yeah, it's important to realize that G, like G, it's it has many different meanings even inside Qigong, like the Qigong means like the practice of life energy. And as a whole, like in a general term, Qi is like life energy. It's like your vitality. If you see some person who's vibrant with life, uh, with energy, then you can say, say he has like a very good Qi. But Qi can also mean in many like, in other aspects, like for example, when you do sports, martial arts, you can like transfer the ener like the e energy of motion inside your body. That can also be called chi. Like for example, when you move the energy from one limb to another in a genetic chain, then that's also energy. So it's good to understand that chi has many different like how how, how do you say like different definitions even inside qigong but as a general term it's like the life force and the energy of your body and the vitality of your body but but like Ero said like in the past like it was all about cultivating the energy and cultivating the longevity and mm. cultivating your vitality because in the past the qigong masters were like like shamans of other cultures or doctors of the west today so they were like the doctors of and the physiotherapists and and personal trainers of the past so their job was to increase not just their vitality but also the vitality of other people and in the past even like 100 years ago or 200 years ago we didn't have access to the modern medicine and we didn't have access to the modern surgeries we didn't have access to any of these things so as a result they had to find like natural ways of healing the body taking care of the body but also natural ways of preventing any problems that can occur in in life or in physical activities or in sports or martial arts so as a result these different ancient ma ancient masters they cultivated these di different techniques different knowledge and different methods to take care of the body and and because Back in the day, it was very brutal life. Like if you pray, broke your knee or your shoulder, it was mm. broken forever. There was no surgery and nothing. So they had to find a way to prevent these kind of injuries, but also a way to fix them with natural methods alone. Because imagine if you did some martial arts and somebody kicked you in the knee or you did some wrong movement and you broke your knee, like you were handicapped for life. So. So as a result, they really went deep into the healing the body and taking care of the body in natural ways and as well as possible. Like they practiced breathing techniques, they practiced different postures, different movements and different mental exercises and mantras and just tried to find ways to really strengthen the body and improve the vitality and everything else. So... That's how, in short, like after four or five thousand years of like developing and history, like that's how Qigong was brought today. Yeah, I think there's also the very uh, more like esoteric background uh, 
and all of this uh, weird alchemy that they were trying to do. But I think the yeah, but it's good to understand there's also different forms of qigong. Mm. Like people when pe- today when West people see qigong, they think it's just this, you know, just move the energy in your body and mm. just for health. But in the back back in the day and even in today, in, if you find real ancient qigong, it has many different sides. It has like the spiritual enlightenment qigong, which is all about you know bringing bringing yourself to the higher consciousness. But then there's also health qigong, which is just for you know, improving the health and vitality of the body. And then there's fighting Qigong, which is for performance and martial arts and sports and like this. Yes, and uh, and all of these have their, like, different, you know, I think the each method there here can go, like, very, very really deep. And I like that you said that they were kind of doctors, because I also talk, thought about this as, it's a, it's a kind of a medical system, almost. Although I'm not sure if I would like to say or call Qigong as a medical system because people might understand it in the wrong way. Because in this system, the medicine itself is just like a quite a small part, so like one part. Whereas if I feel uh, the other way I feel about the Western medicine system is that the medicine is the biggest part, like that's the main part of it. But in this Qigong system, which is about healing the body, it's about yes, healing injuries, fixing injuries, preventing injuries, but also just maintaining a really like good like vitality in your body. Like we talk about this energy, uh, like a, li- a life force, which is a a difficult to grasp concept. But uh, you know about this concept itself, because I think the the actually the practice of qigong and the methods were trying to, or they are something that tries to give you a grasp of this thing that is kind of foggy, it's cloudy, like what energy, like you can't it really take a crap of it, like you can't have it concretely in your hand and, and measure it and watch it like this way. But the Qigong practice was something that actually, through, this, through the practice and through this very deep meditation and intuition and body awareness, can give you actually a sense of this energy. Like that's the whole idea of it actually I, if this whole practice is based on these people who were in tune with their bodies, like this is the first thing that made it possible for these methods to even become a reality. These people could not have created these methods unless they were actually really like trying to deeply meditate in their bodies. And that is even part of the practice that they're doing. But so that is one of the major things that also has to happen within this system, whether you want to call it medical or not. But this is why I like the Qigong so much, is that it is fundamentally, it's very empowering method. It is not something just that you take the pill or you take the medicine. There's also medicine like herbal medicine. You know, you, you have different, there's you know, tons of herbs there for all these different purposes. But every single time you are giving a lot of tools to make changes in your like personal life, in the nutrition that you're putting into your body, and also in your movements and your exercises or how you're doing exercises. This is like emphasized. So you're given actually uh, things that you can do by yourself. Like you are given power over yourself. And I, this is what I really love about this certain re- responsibility that it brings. And it's the greatest guarantee of health in a way that you can even have. And I'm not against of using drugs ever or something like this. Sometimes you may need and so on, but it's always about what is emphasized, like what, I- what you know, what comes on really the surface. What is like, uh, well like what is the most important factor of it? Like this is how I feel about the this system of qigong. That it the biggest thing that I've gotten from it is really emphasizes self awareness and healing through that. Yeah, because qigong is. Like a, it's a, like a completely different framework of understanding the body and not just the body, but also understanding life. Like the way they see things and understand things is completely different because their terms are different and their ideas are different and how they approach everything is different because it's like a completely different language, like, like a language in terms of like how to see everything. So that's why it's like, that's why for the Westerners, it can be very hard to understand at first because it's just a different framework and different la- language for understanding the same thing. But for example, the big difference is indeed the fact that in Qigong and in the Eastern way of thinking, 
everything is holistic and they see things in terms of like harmony and disharmony and balance whereas in the west we see more like in specific terms like we we can measure like your blood pressure your your like blood glucose levels and also like see different measurements for every single thing like of course in the east you cannot see that like you cannot measure clearly every single thing and even energy in your body like everyone knows it exists because you can see the difference between people who have high energy and people who have low energy and also even in your own experience you can know when you have good energy and when you have no energy at all so of course we know it all exists but how do you measure it like in the west we try to measure it like maybe five different measurements and that's it but in the east because they didn't have the tools to like pinpoint these different uh, neurotransmitters or hormones and stuff so they understood instead they understood everything in holistic terms and in like as a big window in, instead of you know one specific things for example in the east they have this concept of five different elements for example the wood fire earth water and metal and and with these different elements they understood the body as well for example some people maybe they had like uh, super high energy like so much energy that they were like even a little bit destructive and aggressive and they were like doing like this like in the i don't know how do we maybe in the west we call it is like a, some manic or some like a, a bit crazy person but in the east this is called like this guy has too much fire like and this kind of behavior leads to like destructive like uh, consequences in the environment but also it's bad for the ha- heart health and everything else for example maybe in the west the same person is using too much caffeine is using like uh, e- like exogenous steroids or something like this so his adrenaline levels and testosterone levels are incredibly high all the time which leads to heart problems and many problems like this but mm. of course in the east they didn't have these same concepts and these same terms but instead they saw this person who was who was like full of fire like all the time full of fire so they understood that this kind of behavior and this kind of uh, internal state leads to heart problem problems and leads to other problems and likewise people who had like lots of water and like this they had more like a calm a more serene appearance and like this so if somebody had too much fire they thought that man this fire has to go down and and they have to bring the water up so it everything becomes balanced and in harmony and it happened through different diet changes different behavior changes different ha- like changes in habits and stuff like this and maybe herbal medicine and qigong and breathing patterns and like this yeah everything could be like described describe or you could find like a like an interesting work like you have a dampness in your body or you have like the hot hotness in your body or cold in your body or dry body or the fire and and so on the water and i think it's uh, very interesting that they they had like very clear they they like had a system for it so they could tell like what for example you should then eat immediately like uh, exactly what what increases this quality in your body and what increases that quality what decreases and this and that and but uh, just finding like that it was almost like self-evident for them that through changing what you eat you can change your state and for us it's like if you go to doctor and it would be so clear that you need to make these diet changes in your body like it would be like almost like as clear as a day that you need to change your lifestyle for it but still we resort like everyone even the doctors know here they don't know that this person should be doing the lifestyle changes everyone knows that but still it's not like it, as a, in a part of a culture to offer that as the the first line of medicine is what you actually eat your nutrition and changing that and like you said nutrition is just one again part of that bigger picture there is the the breathing part the meditation part there is the actual exer- exercises that you do in the movement part there is the stillness practice so to say you have uh, the sexual transmutation and everything 
and w- why I you know t- start to talk about or we start to talk about this energy in in general is that I think the energy is so fundamental and crucial because if you have like great energy like that leads to great things like if you feel good if you feel g- great and your energy you know I want to separate this energy from like if you take some like real some drug and you're like 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 this way like you have energy right but it's not necessarily good like if you're just like jittery and and you you can't control it like energy itself is not necessarily the um, it's not about the amount of energy only it's about the quality of the energy and the, it's about really the balance yeah the, the, the balance of energy yes the balance and the quality of it and so if you have, like I said, clean energy, something that comes through good lifestyle habits, it comes through proper breathing and it comes through this exercising, for example, the Qigong, then y- you will do like good things in your life almost automatically. If you just take care of that underlying energy, energy root, whatever, you, you can have your own terms for this. Like it, but I just like to... To co- talk about this like internal or energy root that you have, that you have increased, then you will literally like do better things in your life. You will make better choices, better I mean better decisions. You have you are much clearer also in your head. Like you can actually choose between what is actually good and what is not good for you, what is the right and what is wrong. And so having good energy has so far reaching uh, far, far reaching, uh, how do, what do you say, results, benefits, co- uh, b- benefits and consequences that it's, it's enormous. And every, t- like I feel this all the time. Like if I just don't have the good energy or if I try to get the energy through, for example, just eating, eating and eating, it, it doesn't lead to usually a good outcome. But if I'm clean, like I, I keep my, I don't overeat, I eat healthy. I do my meditation, I do my standing practice. I, I m- have a very different type of energy, actually. A different type of concentration also. Because it's not just, a, you know, if you, you ha- need to be able to concentrate your energy. And when you concentrate it, you can actually get things done in a very nice manner. And within this Qigong system, what I so like about it is that this is what, is what it tries to do. It, it not only it's, it's that it increases your energy, but it gives you the ability to actually use it and concentrate the energy. And it gives you the ability to really absorb the energy, whether it's your breathing or nutrition or just poster also. Poster is an energizing like a machine, uh, not machine, but a vehicle as well. Like it's the alignment of the body as well that is in these practices. So all of this makes you this kind of like an antenna of, of absorbing energy and accumulating energy. And it, there can be so many like mystic terms and so on, but it's simply, it's really about becoming a healthy human being in all areas of life in a way. And Qigong is just one of one very highly developed system within this kind of energy practice realms, I think. Yeah, it's like in the past, when I was doing something good, I I was thinking that if something is good, doing a lot of it is, is even better and doing it as much as possible is the best. Yeah. But this is not the right way. Like even I- everything you do, even if it's good, if you do it too much, it turns bad. But in the West, everyone thinks like green tea is good. So let's drink like 10 cups per day to increase our like uh, growth hormone levels and reduce inflammation. But that's actually horrible for your body. So in in the past, this master understood that balance is everything and harmony is everything and you you find the balance and harmony by reducing certain things and increasing certain things and like this but it's never about maximizing everything or maximizing one thing or maximize it's it's ne- that n- it's never the right way and you also mentioned before that in the east it was self evident that the diet has a very big impact on your healing and how you befa- behave and everything else but like in the West, we have come to this point where we fix symptoms, but we never fix the root cause. Whereas in the past, they, like fixing the root cause was really the only solution. So they didn't really even try anything else. But in the West, you just put bandits, bandits over wound and you 
just try to fix symptoms and you try to give some uh, drugs and substances that the person can keep on doing the the problematic behavior and problematic lifestyle despite having the problems so so but even still the doctors know the lifestyle change is the real way to actually do it but but they just don't they just think the medicine is the like the fastest and the best fair way for the or maybe not even the best way but it's what the actually the consumer or the patient wants so but in qigong it was like completely different like fixing the root cause was the only solution and changing your diet was the only solution and the focusing on breathing and movement and exercise these were the solutions to fix to fix the body and as a result they even created like different qigong cycles for example in the health and fighting qigong course there are many different cycles for example the one of the 30 day cycle is where you like uh, do semen retention so you don't ejaculate ec- ec- and you also practice low hang kong form and you make changes to your diet and as a result you increase your increase your fire like more and more so that you will actually have better performance and better like uh, more vital body for any martial art for any sport or even like uh, any life activity but similarly there's also like a meditation routine or like a 30 day cycle where you can do the exact opposite like you calm the body down you heal the body instead of increasing the fire and for example for this for example the meditation like this probably nothing better for mental health than meditation and fixing your diet and in the past they already had these solutions and they created these different cycles for different purposes because there's never one perfect way to just you know fix everything like you have to jump from period of healing to period of performance in order to maximize your potential in anything you do yeah and this i suggest like for people because some people might still not even feel like that's that's the even the way to go like you're so conditioned in your culture maybe you're already used to like always taking some medicine externally or just waiting you know you, you really don't pay attention to these things but you can make very slight changes in yourself and you may notice a difference and even within these um, these uh, actual physical practices without really changing anything else doing this like ro- the grand circle for example i think is one of the most powerful things that i learned and like if i if i had to i'm happy that i don't have to but if i had to make like a option or choose only one thing that i could have learned from qigong i would probably choose the standing practices because i think that was such an eye-opening experience and it was something that not only was able to heal the body a lot uh, but it's it was able to strengthen the body and it was also a method to increase the energy like crazy so i have like multiple times i almost if i keep a little break from the grand circle and i go back to it i always like forget like how effective it actually is so people uh, couldn't understand and I couldn't understand how just by standing still but in different actually posters and very specific poster and very specific alignment you could literally come out of it after just 10 minutes uh, like a new person almost because I remember sometimes when I've been like just low of energy and I'm like I'm literally like this way like well I just (laughs) <laughs> you know i just don't want to want to do anything don't have motivation and then i do this grand circle and even all the entire period of time in that circle i remember this one time i was just like done and I, i'm standing there in these different posters i'm going through these positions there's actually eight different positions in it and i'm my because i don't want to actually be in any of those positions because i just don't, don't have the energy for them but because i put m- through the power of the mind i first i put myself into those positions then my body has to respond to those and i know the correct breathing method so that actually helps because the breathing is actually the pump that then pumps pumps like it starts to like work and work and pump the energy into those posters and something starts to happen when you just stay there and you allow, allow your body to wake up into these positions and then after the 10 minutes i was still feeling like oh i'm still gonna probably have to just lay down after this and but when i stop i'm like 
it's a different mode of being like suddenly it's it's there uh, and how to explain this well, i don't have well i can explain it because yeah. like <laughs> like in because posture has like almost it has dramatic effects on your hormones in your neurotransmitters and everything in your body like in the western way of thinking like the mainstream science we already know this like if you do take like some power posture immediately immediately your testosterone levels go up like even you con- and as a result your confidence levels go up like as well and there are many different postures which you can practice that increase different hormones and different neurotransmitters in your body mm. and even small gestures in your body for example when you smile your brain releases endorphins and it also increases your dopamine and serotonin levels just smiling mm. and and this is what the ancient masters actually discovered like they discovered that by changing the posture by or by fine tuning the post different postures and different you know mental states you can access different hormones and different states in your brain for example sometimes if i get very stressed and i'm i feel like there's like a storm inside my head then I just do you know the grand circle for even just two minutes and immediately mm-hmm. everything calms down like it feels like like a storm has passed passed and now it's like a serene lake or something like this and and it's not just you know the grand circle circle is not like the only way to access these different states because there's also like these different fighting qigong movements and postures which bring the exactly the opposite you know mentality in your body like they really train your mind for war for combat for performance and for power because you really it there's just you know spy i think of course we haven't tested this scientifically but i i think they really spike your testosterone your adrenaline and dopamine and everything else so you feel like an amazing level of power in your like arms and in, in body in general and you feel like now I'm ready to perform and and of course this is not unique to of course it's very sp- what you Qigong is very special at is that it has taken this aspect to a very high level in in very unique way of course this is nothing new because even if you do any physical activity for maybe let's say 10 minutes you will feel high in your head and you will feel much better than before you started because suddenly you started moving your body and you have so much more energy so much more vitality and even even your mentality changes so there's nothing new in terms of that it actually works because there's even studies where they like have checked how your posture affects your testosterone levels and dopamine and stuff like this but what qigong like the tra- the grand circle and the lohan gong from fighting qigong and also the different postures from internal qigong like the forehands and stuff like this where they where they are different is that there's just so much more higher level of this same thing like the these masters as you know discovered this different posture and different movements which also accompany company like different breathing techniques and different mental states to really have this dramatic and drastic effects and changes and transformations in your whole body structure in including your brain chemistry and mind so like ero said if you practice the grand circle it's like you become a different person after the practice and likewise if you practice the the monkey fish door 24 set or lohan gong or the four ends from the internal kung fu it's like you are also a different person but in different ways like the grand circle creates like a very different person or like different mentality and different like physical uh, transformation compared to the Lohan Kong or the the fighting Qigong because they, they just have different uses but this the, this whole idea in my opinion is very revolutionary because because in the west we understand that posture yeah it can have some effect and if you exercise you will feel better like this we know it it's possible but people just cannot fathom and they cannot realize that how dramatic the effect can be and how much they can actually change like like 
I don't use any drugs, any medicine, any pills, like almost never, like never, never, never. Like maybe in very, very, very specific cases I use, mm -hmm. like very seldom, like maybe once per two years or something like this. But of course I come from the old way of thinking like 10 years ago when I was doing some whatever medication like ibuprofen, like <laughs> nothing, nothing crazy. <laughs> but anyway, but what people cannot understand is that these natural ways of mastering you breathe, Luang Gong and the Grand Circle, like they can have equal, if not more powerful effects on your mind and your body as like some external Western medicine would. Except these are like areas stated in the beginning, like these are clean, pure forms of energy and pure and clean forms of changing your body chemistry and transform how you feel and perform without any external substances. There's just, it's all internal. You just, you just take, you just access these, these mental pathways and these internal hormones and internal states and internal f uh, stages of consciousness through natural ways. And then who, like, in, when you can do this, who is in power? Is it the pharmaceutical industry, which is trying to maximize profit and give you this medicine for 10 different things? Or uh, what I mean, give you this 10 different medicine for different things? Mm. Or are you in charge or are you in power when you can access the same effects and the same transformations by yourself without paying a, th paying a dime to these corporations? Yes, <coughs> that's. I think that is really the key of it. Or yeah, like I mentioned even to start, like that this this is empowering. These methods, all of these methods are empowering, and this is what I, what I love about it. Because for me, this journey started in my teenage years. Like that is when I started to question the stuff that I was putting into my body. It was like the first point when I started to go from this kind of how do I say? It's a kind of a childhood into a kind of a maturity. I don't have a good concept here, but you have this 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 childhood where you just kind of uh, y you're in the society and you you just you you blindly in there. Like if you're giving a pill, you just take the pill. Why not? Because you 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 know you've been living here your whole life and it's the familiar people. You know maybe your parents or the doctor you trust and they give you something you take it. And if you buy something from the grocery store, you, why would they sell it if it was not good for you? If it wasn't healthy? Like if you buy a bag of candy. It, hey, they sell it at the store. It can't be bad for you. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like, you just like take everything by, uh, like not questioning anything. And th there was I had a big wake up call at at some point because I started to get the very bad skin problems and I was just it it was just a wake up call for me. Like like something's wrong. I'm putting into my body something that or or something in my life. So something is cause, <laughs> causing this. That's how I thought about it. And now I start to look at, like what do these all this food have inside of them? And of course I made like tons of mistakes and wrong uh, like wrong let's say wrong conclusions also in the beginning. But it was just what I'm trying to explain here is that wake up where I realized that not everything is good that we are being given. Like and and you need to take a certain amount of personal responsibility, and it may mean that you're going to be doing some things even wrong in the beginning, but that is the journey that you have to take. You know, for some people they can keep on for years and and follow the rules and take the everything that is like the doctor orders. Take everything, you know, take that, and you, you can kind of like come by and, and go by and not have problems at least in a in the short while, but maybe later in the years they'll come up. But, you know, some people like me, the, who their body responds much quicker, much more sensitive to these different, let's say, toxins that you get from the environment or some food ingredients that are no, not good. And they this and this is something that can motivate you to actually make changes and actually study yourself. And I, I, I wanted to have this empowerment for myself and I, it felt natural like it felt like this is how it should be actually and this is uh, this is the whole thing this is the the empowerment that i think we also want to spread with the chicken even with our training methods in general like that's all we're doing we're trying to bring people to their physical autonomy 
And Qigong is just like a fantastic way because it also contains the breathing aspect and the semen retention, which you mentioned at one point. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, you mentioned about it in the in the cycles, right? So if you think about nowadays, people uh, people know and even you know there's a lot of science about porn, about masturbation, about how it impacts the dopamine and everything, how it like really hijacks it. And, and it spends all your dopamine. Like even that, think about how important dopamine is for energy in general. Like if you don't have that dopamine, that sort of motivation, you, you're not going to be doing things. You don't have energy to do things actually. And in Qigong, they talk like semen retention gives you energy because you're not putting, you're not utilizing, you're not uselessly utilizing that dopamine of your body and of your brain, that neurotransmitter. you just like, staying away from from this kind of useless sexual stuff like semen retention is is a is incredibly incredibly effective and important thing in again taking the power back to yourself like it is very essential it's not something that is just this this celibate and you're in celibate because you have to be uh, no it's nothing like that and you don't even have to be in celibate it's just the way where you minimize the wasteful spending of your own energy your sexual energy yes we are like we are not advocating celibacy mm. except on small periods of like in small cycles or even some longer cycles it can have some transformative effects on your like whole whole life and whole body yes but in general as a general rule we are more about advocating like uh, like avoiding wasting your energy and avoiding wasting your like sexual energy and like useless like porn mm. and whatever but there's like because there are studies that show that if you just avoid porn and avoid ejaculation then your testosterone levels go up and even in the old school boxing days they would you know avoid sex for maybe weeks before a fight because they understood understood that you know women and sex makes men's w- uh, legs weak. That mm. was like the old saying. But but these benefits, like this, in the, like for us, qigong is primarily like internal art. Like it's it's the internal way of you know developing the body and taking care of the body. Like it's how you naturally take care of your hormones and neurotransmitter, like brain chemistry, mental health, and and testosterone and vitality and energy levels in general but of course it's like that's the purpose for qigong for us but for us like the animal movements and the maze training and athletic training it's more like external of course it has massive internal benefits as well but we see it like uh, it's more like a necessary way of increasing your athleticism and increasing increasing your actual power and strength because qigong it increases everything indirectly like of course because your testosterone levels go up because your energy levels go mm. up because vitality goes up then you have more energy to work out more energy to, to do animal movements more energy to do martial arts and like this of course it increases your results in all of this in this way but alone it lacks you know these external aspects so that's why the balance is that you practice all of these external arts like maze training, athletic training and animal movements for strength and mobility mobility and flexibility and performance and for athleticism and so on. And then nutrition, diet, qigong, breathing and everything else. It's just for the internal aspects of the body for taking care of your internal health. And even for us, like qigong is not everything we, we do. It's it's one of the sig- most significant significant parts of the internal health and taking care of the internal health. But it's not everything because, of course, we have started yoga and we have started, uh, of course, the Western ways of taking care of the body and everything else. So it's like a, a big part, but not. But it's very significant part, and that's why we recommend it for everyone who wants to get rid of, you know, these external substances external chemicals and external you know crutches to help you perform and he- help you stay healthy because you don't actually need any of this stuff yeah it's really the the crutches i think like you mentioned there that's really in the point of it like you don't want to 
like you, you never know, you know, really what's going to happen. And what, what if like you, you're addicted to something and you, you want, you constantly using it, right? And then suddenly you can no longer get it. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you, you're going to be in serious trouble. And of course, you don't have to think like some apocalypse is going to come and you, know, you no longer can get your coffee or something. But seriously, like, it's still the, the idea that you literally like, you think about it every time you go outside and you take a stick to walk. Like, that's what you kind of, like doing with these with these external substances that you're doing. So, and if there is an alternative, like they, there's a there's an alternative to actually actually use like within these chico methods. And the only thing the, the the difference here is like for example taking coffee is is easy. You or there is the you you, you have to make the coffee. You know, but nowadays <laughs> you just even maybe go to the store and just buy it right so that's it but you get it very easily and then you drink it and it's very easy it's it's like oh everything is pleasant everything is just like and then you get whatever the coffee energy is that you get but with this chicken practice in order to get the energy you have to first put in energy and this is this is the subtle like like difference here that also i, I just I couldn't understand it because it's kind of it's a paradox of qigong is that to to get energy do things that require energy it's the same to to increase your testosterone do things that require testosterone like even if you you don't have to eat testosterone you don't have to inject it you don't even have to eat meat to get the testosterone like go do some wrestling go go do some stuff that that requires like you to stand up and be be like a man. The point here is that in Qigong, there is a small thing that you, you have to give. You have to give a little bit of energy within this practice. First, like I said, when I went to do the grand circle, I was tired. I, I need to like, like get myself up, get doing it. But then you shift the momentum, like you sh shifting the energy momentum of your body. And now it starts to roll. Like you need to give a little bit of energy, but then it starts to get, you just get more and more and more. And that is the small threshold that you kind of have to get past when you're doing na using natural methods that it's, it's not always easy to, to get it immediately. You don't necessarily get it immediately, but if you give a little bit of your energy, then that will sh build up an energetic momentum that starts to you know, increase your overall overall energy and performance so even i like nowadays i don't even drink coffee i don't even drink tea like i have i haven't had any caffeine for years like for years for i think now this spring i, I haven't had any caffeine for three years now, i don't use any stimulants because of course if you need to use them maybe you want to use them it's your life but but i haven't needed anything for energy for years and years like because i just n know how to manage my energy and how to manage my life without any of these things and that's and that's power because most of you people's lives you are such you know apocalypse away from you know <laughs> you know <laughs> getting destroyed completely like imagine Become like crippled. Uh, <laughs> imagine a period of your life when you have no access to that for some bodybuilders out there you can have access to those steroids or you can have access to those caffeine pills or energy energy drinks or coffee or like this like or even food like what what happens like you would be like a, a completely mess a complete mess yes like, like somebody said of course you know it's these are it's very difficult for people to if you have an addiction you have an addiction you know you don't want to give it uh, give up it but for those who, who know that it's a problem, they don't want to be uh, att attached to these crutches. Like they don't want to be crippled if they're taken away. There, is, there are natural ways and natural means. And as I already mentioned, give a little bit of energy to it, kindle that fire, and it will start to like build up, build up, build up. And it is not just like the, the Qigong methods I like, you know, why you should try is that it is not even, there isn't just the, the standing of it. There's so many factors to it. You, you, you get such a holistic transformation, you know, within these cycles, for example, your nutrition, it is the poster, it is the alignment, it is the breathing, it is, uh, it is the sexual transmutation. It is such a holistic way 
of of changing your body and that is why why it's it's also powerful like you you can try different things you can try many different things you're not even you're not even dependent on just one thing to try to change your life Tr- change a little bit on on all of these sectors and you can get amazingly powerful results wi- and very very quickly like give it a chance give some natural method a chance even if it's not a qigong it can be on anything you want but give you the the natural power of your body a chance to change yourself and give you the energy that sustains you your entire life